Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide, 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll begin a new exam that you will find on page number 857. Turn to it, always make sure the book is in front of you. Page 887. Let's get going, shall we? If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as a tutor to help you get ready for the exam, you can you can get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at number one. As you know, the first, first few questions are going to be very straightforward, very simple. It always starts out like that. We are told that T is the total amount, amount of money that we are paying for N tickets. We are further told that T equals to 15 times N plus 12. The question simply is, what does this 12 represent? 15, as we can tell very clearly, represents the price per ticket because if you're going to buy N ticket, you're going to buy, end up paying 15 times N. What does the 12 represent? Well, 12 is what they're calling the one time service charge one time service charge and that's all there is the answer is B number two one for the intercept, the Y intercept number two in number two we're buying two kind of fertilizer are not fertilizer, we're buying two kind A and B A has 60% of the filler material and B we are told has 40% of the filler material whatever the filler material might be, it might be just dirt so in other words if you're buying 100 pound if you buy 100 pound of bag A out of that 100 pound only 40, per 40 pound is going to be the actual fertilizer the remaining 60 pound is just going to be dirt here it's just the other way around, it's a 40% filler which means you get more of the fertilizers so you bought a, you, you, we bought some fertilizer and the amount of fertilizer bought contains amount of fertilizer bought we are told contains 240 pounds of the filler material the question simply is how do we represent that, that concept how do we represent that notion in the form of an equation well it's very simple simple this guy when we buy a bag of this guy 60% of that, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 of this amount. So if you buy X amount, 60% of the X amount is the filler material. If you, if you buy type B, let's call it Y, 40% of that, 40% of that is just the filler material. So therefore, it says the amount of fertilizer bought contains, we're not buying 240 pounds of fertilizer. It says that the amount of fertilizer that we bought contains 240 pounds of filler. Well, there you go. This is the amount of filler in type A. This is the amount of filler in type B, and that has to be equal to 40. And that is answer choice B. Do you understand? This is the amount of filler, not the fertilizer. Let's let's carry on then. Number three. Number three again is again it's a very straightforward thing. We are given two quantities, two plus three i iota, the imaginary number, and then they tell you four plus eight i. And the question is what is its sum? And they go on to tell us that the square root, uh, the i represents the square root of negative one, which is why it's the imaginary number. The one iota is the square root of negative one, which which is completely useless to us. We we, we have no need for it. They just want a sum of this quantity. It's just going to be six plus 11i which is answer choice C which is answer choice C number 4 number 4 number 4 we are told that uh, 4x squared minus 9 equals px plus t times px minus t. The question is what is one possible value of p? 
Well, let's find out, shall we? As you can see, this is Px plus t, this is Px minus t, this is same as this Px, think of this a plus b times a minus b, which I hope that you know comes from what is known as the difference of two squared. a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So this quantity times that quantity is simply going to be, so our a here is Px and our b is t. So it's just going to be p squared x squared, or if you like, px squared minus t squared. Let's open this up. So p squared x squared minus t squared has to equal 4 times s squared. And since they're asking us for the value of p and not t, we really don't care about t. I left out something here. Minus 9. But if, you, if they were asking about t, since t squared is 9, therefore t is either positive 3 or negative 3. But they're not asking for us. We're just going to worry about p. So p squared here, the coefficient of x squared here, this is x coefficient of x squared, p squared equals 4. There you go. p squared must equal 4 because, of, because the coefficient has to match. And therefore p equals either a positive 2 or a negative 2. Obviously, both of them are not going to be in the answer choices. There's only going to be one, either positive 2 or negative 2 in the answer choices. And it seems like it is positive 2. So the answer is A. The answer is A. Number 5. Number 5 on the next page. We are given an equation here that looks something like this. Y is equal to 2x minus 5. Well, first thing we notice is that the slope is positive. The slope is positive. So it's a positively sloped line and negative 5 is the y-intercept. When x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, this drops out and y equals negative 5. So our line that we're looking for has to have a negative 5 or intercept has to be positively sloped. There you go. This has to be negative 5 and it has to be a positively sloped. Whichever matches this figure is what we're looking for. And that is going to be answer choice D. That is going to be answer choice D. It is not B. B, B is wrong because it has a negative slope. B does have the right y-intercept of negative 5, but it is negatively sloped. We are looking for a line that is positively sloped. Number 6. Number 6. Number 6, we are told that x is equal to 2 third of y. And y in turn we are told is 18. The question is, how much, how much is 2x minus 3? Let's find out, shall we? Well, y is 18. Why, why don't we put that in here, see what happens. So x has to equal 2 third times y, which is 18. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to drop out and 18 has... 18 has 6 3's, so x equals 6, 2 times 6, which is 12. There you go. x is equals 12. 12 minus 3. 2 times 12 is 24. 24 minus 3 is 21. The answer is 2x minus 3 equals 21, and that is answer choice A. That is answer choice A. Let's move on to number 7. Number 7, we are told that n equals 7LH. Don't worry about the mumbo jumbo, just concentrate, just concentrate on the on the meaty greedy, the, the, the things that matters to us, uh, the things that matter to us, and ignore everything else, all the mumbo jumbo. This is what we are interested in, and they want us to find out, they want us to solve for L. And that's all it is. So let's do it. If you want to solve for L, divide both sides by 7 times H. That's all. If we divide both sides by 7 times h, l is going to equal to n over 7 times h. That's how simple, that's how straightforward it is. The answer is c. Number 8. In number 8, we are given two functions. So here's the value of x. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we are given we are given a function whose name is W, and we are given another function 
which we are calling t. And they are both functions of x, obviously. And here, here are the values of the functions. Negative 1, 3, 4, 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. The question is, for which value of x, for which value of x is w of x plus the t of x equals x. Well, let's see. We just have to look at the chart. The value of the, the function, the value of the function t plus the value of the function w has to equal x. Well, as you can see, if we add up the w, wx and tx here, negative 1, negative 3 is going to give us negative 4. That's not negative 4. Negative 3 and negative, oh, negative, negative 3 and positive 3. Oh, there you go. A negative 3 and positive Negative 1 and positive 3 is going to give us positive 2. That works. That works. That works indeed. As you can see, 2, let me change the color so that we have some drama going on. 2 does indeed equal 3 plus negative 1. There you go. That's our answer. Here it does not. 4 plus 1 does not equal 3. 3 plus 3 does not equal 4 and so on and so forth. So, for which value of x, for which value of x is this, is this true? The answer is when x is equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, the value of the two functions, the sum of the, val the, sum of the value of the two functions equals the value of the independent variable x. The answer is b. The answer is b. Number nine. Number nine says that root of x plus the root of nine has to equal root of sixty-four. The question is, what's the value of x? Well, that can be that back in it. Well, root of sixty-four we know is eight. Root of nine we know is three, and root of x therefore. There must be something in it. Let me read this problem carefully a little bit. Yes, the reason we know that we don't have to worry about the negative roots is because if you look at the answer choices, they're all positive numbers. So don't worry about the negative roots. Okay, just consider the positive roots. So square root of 9 is 3, square root of 8 is 6, 8. So root of x is simply 8 minus 3, which is 5, and therefore x is simply 25. There we go. And that is answer choice C. That's all there is. That's all there is. That was the end of that page. That was the end of the page. I don't think we should start a new page right now. Because as we turn to the new page, problem number 10, beginning with problem number 10, we're getting into medium problem. We are no longer in the easy territory. We'll tackle it tomorrow. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.